Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with Iridesium and I'm back with another tutorial for the Blender 2.8 Pro Tips course. In this video, we're going to be going over modifiers. So if you remember a while back, I talked about object mode being the default mode. And that is true. It is sort of the mode you want to return to when you are done editing in one of the other modes. However, object mode is not just for moving, rotating, and scaling objects. It has some very, very powerful tools built in. Modifiers is one of those tools. It's one of those tools that allows you to manipulate your object without changing the actual geometry. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So over here on the right of the screen, there's this big panel which we have not covered at all yet. At the very top, you've got this area. This is sort of like layers in Photoshop, I guess. Um, we're not going to go over that right now. What we're going to focus on is this panel down here underneath the collections. This panel is the properties panel. This is where all your object, all your scene properties are going to be kept. So if you hover over this top one right here, it says rendered, and these are your rendered properties. Uh, a few tabs down, you've got your world properties. The one we want to focus on is this one right down here, this little blue wrench. If you hover over it, it says modifiers. So go ahead and click on that tab and it should have one option under it and that is a drop down that says add modifier. So I'm going to um, make sure my cube is selected, hit tab to go into edit mode. And then I'm going to go to face select mode right here. Select the face on the side um, along the X axis. And then I'm going to hit I to activate the inset tool, which is right here. And then E to activate the extrude tool, which is right here. Then just click to uh, confirm both of those actions and you should get something like this. I'm going to tab back into object mode and we're going to add some modifiers. So click on the add modifier drop down. You've got a whole bunch of options, um, a few sections. There's modify, generate, deform, and simulate. We're going to just focus on the generate category right now. And I'm going to select the first modifier and that is the array modifier. As you can see, our object has now been copied along the x-axis once. If you look over here on the modifier, you've got this little arrow. This is to collapse the modifier. You've got this x. This will remove the modifier. And then under that, you've got apply, copy, and the rest of the settings to change all the things that the modifier is doing. So if I look at this first option, uh, which is count, we're going to skip over this fit type. Uh, just go to the count option and turn this up. You can see that it has now duplicated our object four times, as this number indicates. Then you've got your constant offset, which is unchecked, and relative offset. Ignore constant offset for now. We're going to focus on the relative offset. So right here on the relative offset, you can see that the first value is set to 1. That is the x-axis. So you've got x, y, and z. Right now we are iterating this object um, one time along the x-axis, so one of itself. Uh, if I set this to 1.1, it's now 1.1 times over uh, along the x-axis. Or I could just set this to 0, maybe set the y to 1, and you can see it's now going along the y-axis. If I set the z to 1 at the same time, you've got like a stair pattern going on. Anyways, you get the idea. If you tab into edit mode, it has not changed the actual geometry at all. It's only changed the object in object mode. So that's pretty handy. You can edit an object's look without actually messing up the geometry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this array modifier and then file, new, general. We are going to model a basic building with some modifiers. So I'm going to hit A, delete everything here. And then I'll just add in a plane, just like that. And I'm going to cut this plane uh, all the way down so it's just one quarter. So I'm going to hit Control R, Control R to do that. And then I'm going to go to my face select, select this, this, and this. Hit X and choose faces, not vertices. That's going to delete all those faces. And now we only have this one face left. If we now go to our modifiers tab, we can go add modifier and I'm going to choose mirror. So your object should copy over just like this across the y-axis along the x-axis. 
However, we want it to mirror over here too. So I'm just going to select this Y checkbox that's showing the axis it should mirror across. And now we have our full plane back. In edit mode, we only have this section right here to model though. Just a little note, if you remember this origin point we talked about a few tutorials back, this origin point is what your mirror modifier is going to be mirroring across. So if I tab into object mode and hit GX, you can see it's going to split the plane apart. That's because it's mirroring across the origin point. So anyways, while still in edit mode, I'm going to get edge select mode. I'm going to select this edge and this edge. Then I'm going to hit EZ to extrude those up on the Z axis. And something like that. That looks pretty good. Then I'm going to hit Control R, which is going to activate the loop cut tool. Then just use the scroll wheel to scroll up a little bit while hovering over this side. I'm going to scroll up three times. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Then I'll maybe add a loop cut right here around the middle. Now I'm going to use face select mode to select every other face, something like that. And we're here on this side, and I can now hit I to inset. We can't select all the faces because if we do that, it's going to inset it like it's one big face, um, which doesn't really work. So just select every other one, inset it, and do the opposite. Looks like we skipped a face. Control Z to undo that and then reinset. Select the opposite faces and inset those ones. Now select all the inner faces on one side of this object, not on both sides, and then extrude those in. Don't go too far or else these two windows are going to intersect with each other, these two sides of the building once you extrude them in. Something like that. So now I want to select all the vertices just across the top. I'm going to click on this vertice way down here at the end and then hold down control while I click on this vertice. It should select all the vertices in between. I can now hit E, Z to extrude these up on just the Z axis, something like that. And then I'm going to add an array modifier. So I'm going to go add modifier and array. As you can see, it is duplicating the building out along the X axis, which is not what we want. So under relative offset, set the X value to zero and set the Z value to one. So it's pretty cool. It is now arraying our building up along the Z axis, making it taller. Now you could tab back into edit mode, make more changes if you wanted to. Just go control R to extrude it out right here along the top and create a lip. E and then select these ones, not that one, E. Cool. It's a very ugly building. So anyways, we have just modeled an entire building and all we had to do was model this tiny little section, a few windows, and this uh, lip. So I know that's pretty complicated, but that is why I have kept the video short. I really suggest you go through these modifiers and mess around with some of them. You've created this pretty cool building right here. I now suggest you go and create a bridge using the same technique. A bridge is a cool thing to make with modifiers because you only have to model one half of it and one small section and then you can array the rest of it out along the x-axis. If I was you, I'd just pull up some reference and model something cool as bridges can get pretty complicated. You can see I only modeled one half of this bridge and one small section and then used an array modifier to array the rest of it out. This is more advanced and you may not be able to do something like this yet, but this is what you're working towards. A lot of people say that learning Blender is tedious or difficult or boring. For me, it never was that way. I always found it fun to be able to create something so realistic so easily. And I really suggest that you look at it that way too because learning something that uh, you don't find fun is never a good way to learn. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. This is Iridesium.